hello and welcome again in this series of convective heat transfer so previously i have derived this expression of the fourth order tensor c i j k l okay now uh, let us uh, put this expression of c i j k l on the stress strain rate uh, uh, relationship okay so before that i want to uh, clarify something in the actual uh, rtt reynolds transport theorem in the actual reynolds transport theorem i have uh, told you that the theorem is this that is dndt system okay is equal to and that was what del del t of rho dv rho small n dv plus there was a surface term right uh, cs rho n v relative dot theta da so just i was checking my notes so just mind it this will be capital d dt because this is n so i am talking about the the uh, time rate of change of n okay so n is the property of the system so that is a global property so that cannot change with any other parameter like space so uh, maybe uh, because of inertia of writing i have uh, written here del del t of something like rho uh, rho v dv that is for linear momentum and also uh, during the writing the uh, energy equation okay so this is wrong okay this uh, this will not be del del t this will be d d t and um, in that concept in the uh, in that concept so this is actually also not correct okay because this is also integrated over the uh, over the whole volume but but uh, whenever i am writing this thing that is i am taking this integration inside the sorry i am taking this del del t inside the uh, integration then this will be del del t okay because now this rho is a local property so this local property can uh, change with time okay so this can be a function of both space and time okay now uh, so this uh, this uh, uh, little thing should be in your mind because these are very subtle concepts but uh, these are the concepts that make the uh, that make the difference okay so now let us uh, now let us proceed so let us put the expression of c i j k l into the expression of stress okay and strain rate so stress strain rate expression was uh, sigma j i is equal to it was sigma j i right yes sigma j i c i j k l into e k l okay so now uh, putting this expression here so alpha del i j delta i j delta k l into e k l okay plus beta delta i k delta j l into e k l plus gamma delta i l delta j k into e k l now let us do some manipulations okay so here i have delta i j and uh, and here i have delta k l so delta k l will be uh, equal to 1 if k equals to l right and then this k and l will, uh, will also be similar so this expression boils down to e k k or you can uh, write it as anything like right like e j j or e l l anything now beta into so del i k will be 1 if k equal to i right and this will be equal to 1 if j equal to l so let us put k equal to i so then this k will be i and this l will be j so this boils down to e i j 
plus gamma into similarly so now i will not tell the uh, last term so you should uh, find it like eji so if you cannot find it like eji or if you cannot convert it into it then let me know i will describe it into the next video so this will give you a mental uh, mental exercise now uh, let us do something else that is uh, consider a fluid element again okay consider again a fluid element but now uh, we are considering only uh, one dimension or one plane not one dimension one plane that is a 2d fluid element okay so in this fluid element if we consider the variation of shear stress okay um, shear stress or maybe the normal stress also okay so but the moment so let us say that i want to calculate the moment about this axis that is the axis uh, perpendicular to the plane of the paper so this will be okay so uh, this will so if this is the shear stress in this direction so that will be what so according to the notation of tau ij sorry sigma ij i was working with sigma so sigma ij so let us draw the axis properly okay so okay so this is my x1 and this is my x2 so this tau or this sigma uh, will be what acting on the plane that is having two okay that is having uh, normal in this direction right but this is in the direction of negative x2 so the force that will be considered in the positive direction that will be also directed in the negative x1 okay so this is the convention that we have to maintain so this will be 2 1 right acting on a plane having normal in the direction of x2 and the force is acting along x1 okay so then this will be what uh, this will be also sigma 2 1 and then in this phase the normal is along uh, negative x2 so to consider it as a positive stress we have to uh, take the direction along the negative x2 okay so this will be 1 2 and this will be also 1 2 okay so now we have to calculate the uh, so now let us do the angular momentum balance okay so angular momentum balance will give us what sigma 2 1 into the area so the area will be what uh, area will be in this direction okay the dimension is so let me bring another color so this is del x okay and in this direction this is what <coughs> del z okay and this is del y so sigma 2 1 into del x into del z right and this will be into del y so this is the couple uh, produced by the pairs of sigma 2 1 right and there will be an opposite couple right so that will be sigma 1 2 into what del y into del z and the moment term will be considered as del x so this is the net moment on this uh, fluid element and this is and uh, this will be equal to okay so this will be equal to okay so uh, let us consider another thing so if this fluid have a uh, so if this fluid element is having an external body couple okay so m external maybe then this will be equal to what moment of uh, inertia into some angular acceleration alpha right now i can write it like sigma 2 1 minus sigma 1 2 and 
plus m external by del x del y del z so del x del y del z essentially is the volume so moment of inertia will be some mass okay uh, mass into uh, let us say some k square okay so k square will also be a function of del x del y and del z and k being the radius of gyration okay now in this mass so this equation will be divided by del x del y del z so the and uh, this will cut because mass equal to rho into volume so rho will be uh, remaining so now for the fluid element uh, as we apply the limit del x comma del y comma del z tends to zero so then this fluid element will shrink to a point okay so for that as this k is a function of del x del y del z only then at this limit at this limit this thing will boil down to zero right so then sigma 2 1 minus sigma 1 2 is only the function of the body couple right it is coming as mathematically as m external this and this so if we don't have a body couple then sigma 2 1 is equal to sigma 1 2 similarly sigma 3 1 is equal to sigma uh, th uh, sigma 3 1 is equal to sigma 1 3 and 2 3 equal to 3 2 so in the absence of the body couple uh, this is very important in absence of any body couple sigma ij is equal to sigma gi so angular momentum balance is in absence of any body couple uh, ensures the symmetry of the stress tensor okay so here we are considering the absence of the body couple right so now this we have got as our expression of sigma j i so apply symmetry of the stress tensor that is sigma j i equal to sigma i j okay now if we apply this you should be able to find uh, beta equal to gamma right so these steps are mathematically very easy so i want you to uh, uh, figure out these steps okay now sigma j i equal to sigma i j in absence of any body couple then this will be equal to de, um, alpha into delta i j now this e k k is what del u k by del x k and this is nothing but the divergence of velocity okay plus so beta i is equal to gamma and e i j is equal to e j i how so e i j is equal to half into del u i del x j plus del u j del x i so uh, we can readily see that the e i j is symmetric so this boils down to 2 into beta into e i j right okay now this is the deviatory component okay so this is the deviatory component of the stress tensor sigma ij and the hydrostatic component will be given by the hydrostatic pressure okay so uh, uh, better to write it as a uh, as having a superscript dv deviatory so sigma ij hydrostatic is the only the static pressure so that will be minus p because by definition pressure is compressive in nature so minus p delta ij why delta ij because there is no concept of having a shear pressure right so if the direction that is uh, that is the both the surface and the i mean the direction of the surface normal and the direction of, of application of the pressure force those must be the same so uh, pressure cannot act like sigma 1 2 sigma 2 1 3 2 2 3 anything sigma act 
uh, sigma should act only analogous to sigma 1, 1, 2, 2, sigma 3, 3. So this, this Kronecker delta ij, this will ensure that the, that we are uh, taking this uh, contribution of p only with sigma 1, 1, sigma 2, 2 and sigma 3, 3 and not the octagonal components. So now sigma ij total that's we, uh, so that will be equal to so uh, the thing i have told just now that will be clear if you write the full matrix form of the sigma ij then i will uh, find something like this that is sigma 1 1 deviatoric minus p sigma 2 2 deviatoric minus p sigma 3 3 deviatoric minus p and here we will uh, you will have sigma 1 2 sigma 1 3 sigma 2 1 sigma 2 3 sigma 3 1 sigma 3 2 so you should be having so all these are uh, deviatoric components okay so yeah uh, so you should be having a matrix like this if you expand it in a matrix form okay so now let us proceed for sigma ij so sigma ij is equal to then so i have to add those hydro this hydrostatic and deviatory components so delta ij will be taken as common now let me turn this alpha as a new parameter lambda so lambda into del u k del x k minus p right plus and also let me term this beta as a new parameter as mu so mu into uh, now expand eij so that will be half into del u i del x j plus del u j del x i and this half and two will be cancelled out and this will be del u y del x j plus del u j del x i okay so this is the actual newton's law of viscosity right so the sweetest form that that we have studied in uh, uh, from our school days that is uh, sigma is equal to mu into du dy so this is the sweetest uh, form of the navier stokes sorry the newton's law of viscosity but uh, that actually so that forms actually come uh, after taking various assumptions okay so uh, now if you say that the fluid is incompressible okay if you say that the fluid is incompressible then this del u k del x k boils down because i have shown you that for incompressible fluid this is zero okay so and also if the del v del x this component somehow after taking a particular situation somehow uh, let us say for an uh, unidirectional flow there is no v component so then that component vanishes out so for an incompressible unidirectional flow that is true that is sigma equal to mu into du dy okay but that is not the Newton's law of viscosity this is the Newton's law of viscosity okay but now uh, we are about half done in the journey of deriving the energy equation so let us now put the, the expression of sigma ij that we have derived in terms of u uh, u the velocity components in uh, so here we have to uh, replace the so let me just cut the equation or let me not cut the equation right now because uh, i want to derive this term okay so sigma ij into del u y del x j okay therefore sigma ij into del u y del x j okay so this will be what delta ij del u y del x j into lambda del u k del x k minus p plus this into this whole square plus 
mu into del u j del x i into del u y del x j. Okay. Okay. Now this delta i j will be one only when i equal to j, and then I have to put here also i equal to j, right? Then this boils down to del u j del x j and that is equivalent to del, del u k del x k. So this becomes del u k del x k whole square. Okay. And what uh, remains is minus p into del u k del x k plus mu into del u y del x j whole square plus del u j del x i into del u y del x j okay so now another thing so up till this expression only we have uh, taken an extra consideration of newton's law of viscosity obviously other things were there that is isotropic homogeneous no and the absence of the body couple and obviously the continuum hypothesis has to be valid now uh, uh, let us take another assumption. So, let me derive that assumption. Okay. So, sigma ij, I have derived that. Uh, let me do it in a side page because this is an. Uh, so, sigma ij is equal to minus p plus lambda into del u k del x k into delta ij plus plus what mu into del u y del x j plus del u j del x i right so now write sigma 1 1 so just put i equal to j equal to 1 so this will be minus p plus lambda into del u 1 del x 1 so delta 1 1 is 1 and mu into uh, del u del u one del x one plus del u one del x one so two mu into del u one del x one. Similarly, sigma two two will be what minus p plus lambda into del u two del x two plus two mu into del u two del x two. Sigma three three will be minus p plus del u three del x three plus to mu into what del u3 uh, sorry I have done a mistake here so this term was del u k del x k so this is already a I mean this is already a invariant of any free index this is not containing a free index so this is already del u1 del x1 plus del u2 del x2 plus del u3 del x3 okay so all this will be k k and k k now add add and divide by 3 okay so this will be sigma i i by 3 so at this stage you must understand that sigma i i it means summation over the variable i okay so this will be so minus 3 p by 3 so, so that will be minus p plus all these terms are being repeated so this term will uh, remain as this okay plus 2 mu by 3 del u1 del x1 plus del u2 del x2 plus del u3 del x3 and that is del u k del x k right so this will be what okay so now sigma i i by 3 okay so this is essentially the mechanical pressure sigma i i by 3 okay that is the average of the normal stress on a fluid element so this is the mechanical pressure okay and this minus p is a thermodynamic pressure okay So thermodynamic pressure means that will be uh, related to the um, equation of state. Okay. So 
I can write that P mechanical minus P thermodynamic, okay, minus P thermo. This will be equal to del u k del x k plus uh, into lambda plus 2 mu by 3, right. Now, this P mechanical minus P thermo, so this is equal to 0 if del u k del x k is equal to 0 that is incompressible flow incompressible flow okay and uh, or I mean if this is one condition or if lambda plus 2 mu by 3 is equal to 0 okay so if the flow is incompressible then it is exactly same the p the p mechanical and p thermal and if the flow is not incompressible then this condition has to satisfy okay so if this condition satisfies then that is called a stokes stokesian fluid and this is called stokes hypothesis okay So, any fluid uh, maintaining or obeying the Stokes hypothesis is called a Stokesian fluid, right. So, for a Stokesian fluid, P thermo is equal to P mechanical. So, now if P thermo is equal to P mechanical, then lambda is equal to minus 2 mu by 3, okay. Now, let us put it here. So, here for a Stokesian fluid, you have to uh, remember Stokesian fluid, okay, lambda equal to minus 2 mu by 3, okay. Now, if this is so, then let us write. Now, this term um, has mu, this term has mu. So, let us take the mu common and then if I take the mu common that then what uh, remains is uh, minus 2 by 3 into this then this then this okay. So, all these things I am writing as phi. So, mu into phi minus p into del u k del x k clear where phi is equal to del u i del x j whole square plus del u i del x j into del u j del x i minus 2 by 3 into del u k del x k whole square ok. So, the uh, so this is phi. Now, we got this term which term in this equation now the time has come to cut out this equation because we need it right. So, where is the equation? Here is the equation right ok. Ok, so I need the equation. Uh, let me take it down. Okay. okay, so now it is fine. So now instead of in place of this term, I have to put this term. Okay, so let us write the modified equation. So rho into dh dt is equal to dp dt minus p into divergence of u plus q triple dash minus this thing qj will be there okay because this was divergence plus mu into pi minus p into divergence of u right because this term is divergence of u okay so 
now we have all the terms all the required terms okay so now let us see just let me confirm one thing that this was also p into so dp dt minus p into so will it be minus so i have the doubt because uh, the total energy equation and i have subtracted the mechanical energy equation right so the mechanical uh, energy equation was having what always try to revisit the things so this was the mechanical energy equation and the um where was the total energy equation so this was the total energy equation right so in this total energy equation so let me okay so i think i have separately took the in energy equation i have separately took this term it is p into delta u okay okay so let us uh, uh, so let us proceed uh, if we find anything illogical then we will revisit okay so now our next objective is from h we have to find from h we have to uh, convert the equation in t that is temperature okay so how can we do that so we have a relation okay we have a relation tds equal to dh minus vdp so this equation is very very interesting because when we derive this equation we derive it considering that we are following a reversible path okay only then i can say that tds is equal to delta q okay but but uh, after after de uh, uh, deriving this equation okay i can apply it to any path uh, uh, and why because this ds is a is a uh, thermodynamic property so if you uh, so no matter that uh, that which path um, you are following be it a um, um, irreversible path and be it a, a reversible path for for both the cases the, the expression for ds will be uh, remaining same okay because s is not a not a path function okay so tds equal to dh minus vdp then dh equal to tds plus vdp okay so i have to convert this h in terms of totally the t okay so i can write this ds or now s okay so for a simple incompressible simple incompressible substance okay s is a function of temperature and pressure okay so mind this line if the substance is not simple incompressible then we cannot express any property in terms of other two properties so if now then ds is equal to del s del t at constant pressure into dt plus del s del p at constant temperature into dp right now del s del t at con at constant pressure is not is nothing but cp by t okay so how can we find this is is uh, this will also come from this okay i will show you uh, so 
and del s del p from uh, the from the maxwell uh, equation it boils down to minus uh, del v del t at constant pressure so into dp right okay so now uh, let us put this ds here okay so then dh is is equal to t into cp by t dt okay plus t into uh, del v del t minus del v del t at constant pressure into dp plus v dp okay so i can write it as cp dt okay into v minus v minus v into v minus v into t into d del p del t at constant p into 1 by v into dp so that will be equal to cp dt uh, so uh, plus v into okay 1 minus t into now uh, what is this sorry this is uh, del v del t at constant pressure by 1 by v and that is the uh, volume volume compressibility beta okay so that is the compressibility beta okay uh, not compressibility sorry compressibility is del v del p so th so this is the coefficient of volume expansion okay so now this will be what so this is beta del p okay so this is dh so earlier dh was in terms of entropy okay but our objective was that we cannot um, uh, that that we cannot i mean um, derive the uh, energy equation in terms of something that we cannot measure that is um, that is entropy uh, so entropy is not directly measurable okay so what you can directly measure is uh, like volume pressure temperature these things okay so that means dh dt is equal to cp into dt dt plus volume into 1 minus beta into t into dp dt okay so we have this thing now let us put and before that just let me revisit the uh, equation a bit and why i am doing that again and again i will tell you okay so maybe from this part okay okay so this is what so this was the part from where we jumped from i to h right and before that i think everything is okay i have checked okay so here it was minus del p del t right and this will be also minus because this whole thing was under the second bracket so if this is minus then i i had done I had done one thing that I took this this part in LHS and I sent all these two terms into the RHS. So both these terms should be in plus sign, right? So just correct it in your notes. That is in this equation. Uh, where was the equation? The, the thermal energy equation. Where was it? I have just okay okay so here this will be plus okay here this will be plus so how i get so how i got the intuition that the equation is wrong because these two terms cannot be there i have earlier st uh, studied the energy equation and uh, there was no such term so these two so these two terms should cancel each other so just because i know the energy equation 
that is why i got the end position and nothing else okay so now so dh dt uh, we know the expression now so now we have to put this expression uh, here so let us multiply the row also so multiplying the row okay row into dh dt is equal to row into cp dt dt plus row into v is 1 so that will be 1 minus beta t okay dp dt right so now let us again cut out that equation okay again so yes okay now let me again cut out that equation this equation this time okay so the whole equation should be there okay okay so now i have to put okay so let me also cut this thing because so that you guys can see both this equation into one frame right so this will be this okay okay so rho into dh dt let us put the expression rho cp capital d dt plus dp dt plus b sorry minus so uh, this these silly mistakes can ruin my life one day i know but what can i do so this will be dp dt plus q generation minus del q j double dash del x j plus mu into phi okay and this got cancelled out right okay so now this thing will be cancelled out right so rho into cp this is equal to okay now uh, for a Fourier fluid, okay, so if the Fourier laws of conduction, FLC, Fourier law of conduction is varied, then Q J double dash is equal to minus K del T del X J, okay, Q J is equal to this, right, so this is true for this constitutive equation only. So then the equation totally becomes so here it will be this plus q triple dash plus k into del del x j into okay so let me put the k into the bracket but it doesn't matter because I have already taken the, the fluid to be homogeneous so this is the celebrated energy equation okay or specifically the thermal energy equation okay so this is the what thermal energy equation okay so let us understand the term separately so this is the easiest term that is the volumetric heat generation so this is heat generation so just uh, take a look that heat generation is always positive and that will increase the temperature okay or it is the energy generation okay and this is the uh, diffusion term okay so this is the diffusion term or maybe you can say the conduction term okay so this is the viscous viscous dissipation
right. So, just look one thing that we have said this is a Fourier fluid that is the mode of heat transfer is conduction only. So, convection is not a separate mode of uh, heat transfer ok. So, conduct so convection is advection assisted conduction ok. So, advection is ensured by this term because this has uh, the u components of velocity. So, this term ensures the importance of advection and this term ensures the importance of conduction ok. So, so here also conduction is the main mode of heat transfer. So, now if you have radiation, so for that radiation also this divergence of Q this will change ok. So, uh, in a participating media ok, so this, uh, so this divergence of Q this has a uh, this has an expression ok. So, if you uh, apply some assumptions in radiation so, you have to study this divergence of Q because if you have the, uh, if you have radiation important in any media, okay. So, then you have to incorporate that term also in the energy equation. So, that will be something G minus uh, lambda I. So, so something, uh, so something like it was, I do not remember it exactly. So, then you have to in, um, incorporate it in this part also, okay. And this part is what? This part is the deformation work, okay. So, this part is the deformation work. So, for an incompressible fluid, okay. So, for an incompressible fluid, uh, beta is 0 because the volume uh, cannot change, okay. Or so, rather than the appropriate harmon the appropriate terminology is not an incompressible fluid, the, the incompressible flow. So, these things are very subtle and very important, okay. Because, just note it down, incompressible, incompressible fluid. So, that means that uh, density or volume, okay, that, it is, that is the density is not a function of pressure ok. So, that is a, uh, so that comes from the uh, property of the fluid ok. But incompressible flow, incompressible flow ok. So, that means that the volumetric strain is 0 that is the, that is the totally a kinematic consideration ok. That is the divergence of the velocity is 0 or the volumetric strain is 0. So, for an incompressible fluid uh, flow, this thing uh, will not be there because there cannot be any volume change, ok. That is the volumetric strain is 0, that is del V del T by uh, into 1 by V that is 0, ok. Because this is uh, essentially the divergence of velocity, ok. So, this is the deformation work contribution, ok. Or the uh, pressure work, uh, we can say, ok. So, if all these things are positive, ok, then that will increase the temperature, right. And another thing, this viscous precipitation, I will talk it, I will talk about it separately in the next video. This, this viscous precipitation cannot be negative, that is the phi cannot be negative and and interestingly, we assume that that uh, mu is positive, but uh, I mean why mu should be exactly positive or always positive or that lambda should be negative, ok. So, that can be shown by a procedure that will ensure that to, that to satisfy the second law of thermodynamics, we have to have the mu to be positive. So, all these things I will derive in the next video. And phi, the mathematical expression of phi uh, ensures that phi is positive. So, all these things, uh, I mean, specifically this viscous hesitation term, I will uh, talk about it in the next video. And all the other terms, you can see that 
um, that heat generation is essentially positive. Obviously, there can be a, a heat sink also. If there is an uh, externally applied heat sink, then this can be also negative, right? And but that is not heat generation. So here I have termed it as a heat generation and diffusion. Okay, so uh, so this K is also positive. Okay, this K is also positive. Then that will depend on the uh, sign of the uh, del T uh, del X J. Okay, so I will talk um, um, again separately on these terms. So this is the energy equation. Always learn that the heat transfer is basically by conduction and not convection. I mean convection is not a new mode of heat transfer. So let me know if you have any doubt. So this was the full derivation of the thermal energy equation. Okay, if you have any doubt, let me know and also write your suggestions about how I should go. Okay, uh, I mean if I am going uh, too fast or too slow or anything else. Okay, and also if you feel that anything is illogical, let me know. If I am wrong, I will correct it in the next video. Okay, and up till then, take care and goodbye.